and very pleased to be joined here on Sports Spectrum by my friend. We're actually returning her to Sports Spectrum. It was a few years back when we had her on the show, and now we welcome her back to the show. Rachel Barbeau is here. Rachel, welcome. Thank you so much, my friend. It's an absolute honor to be back. Your show is, I have people messaging me on, on, on Twitter and saying, will they follow me? I want to do that. I want to do that show. So <laughs> I, uh, I recently saw your post about uh, the number of downloads you had hit. And I think when you put out positive content, people can't help but be drawn to that. So congratulations. I'm so excited to be back. Thank you. I appreciate your kind words, and we're excited to have you back, obviously. But let's start with now. We're taping this just so people are aware. End of March here, so it's been a couple weeks since the world changed, at least the United States changed. It's been a couple months since the world has started to change, certainly with the virus. Um, what a weird world that we're in. What's this been like for you? I know there's so many different avenues and areas. We were talking beforehand, before we started taping, about how this has, has affected uh, you and your circle, but share with us kind of what it's been like for the last couple of weeks with you. Um, well, first of all, I'm a solo quarantine. <laughs> Understood. That still, that still counts. <laughs> <laughs> so I think all bets are off in terms of uh, staying sane. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> when you're a solo quarantine, you know, people are talking about being with your family and and all these things, and that is wonderful. And man, I am so happy for families um, across the country. I'm telling you what, sometimes, and we'll get into that later, I'm sure, but sometimes I think some of the worst things can bring some of the most beautiful results. Yeah. And, um, and there are families across the country that are staring at each other and having dinner and talking and moms and dads reuniting and, and kids getting to know their dads and their moms again. And I think that's a beautiful thing, but I myself am a solo quarantine with my dog. So uh, there have been days where I'm very close to naming a volleyball. Um, you know, we haven't had a ton of sunshine in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, you know, it's really been a challenge for me to live what I, um, what I espouse, what I teach, and I'm changing the narrative, but I found ways to hold on to my joy. I have found ways to stay grounded. I, um, I have um, boundaries by which I know what the things I can and can't do. And I think one of the things that I've talked about recently is practicing the pivot. And what do I mean by that, Jason? I mean, we can focus on, all of us can focus on the deal we lost, the trip we didn't take, the, you know, the um, meeting that didn't happen, the prom that didn't happen, the sports season that didn't happen. And it will drive you absolutely insane or you can practice the pivot and focus on the things that you can do, focus on the things that you can control, focus on the potential of, of what could come out of this, right? And so I really had to do that in my own life because um, you know, my April was incredibly uh, full and the next coming months and, and year was incredibly full because I speak to large crowds of people. Yeah. Uh, but I have been having to practice the pivot in my own life and, um, and stay sane and stay joyful. Well, you are what I like to call an, a professional encourager. <laughs> and I can't imagine more now with all that's going on, that encouragement is needed by so many. Talk about what you've been doing. I know you, you, you refer to them as your, your kings and queens, mm -hmm. I, I, which I love, who are the athletes that you talk to, that you work with, that you have conversations with, that you invest in. Can yeah. you share a little bit about what those conversations have been like, especially these last few weeks? Yeah, it's, um, they usually start with, how are you doing? How you doing, king? How you doing, queen? You know, I have ongoing relationships with, with athletes across the country, and then some so there's a reason, let me back up and say this, when I speak at the end of my talks, I purposely put up a Twitter, my Twitter and my Instagram. And I do that because I never, ever want to be the speaker that comes in, speaks and, um, and says, see ya. You know, I, I refer to myself as a lifer. Um, you know, I have, I mentioned this to you earlier and I, I love saying this, I'm very proud of it, but I've been to one of my King's weddings. I've gotten pictures from the delivery room. And so for me, I have these ongoing relationships. And so my days and nights, I'm not kidding you, have been for the past, however long we've been at this. I mean, yesterday I thought it was Monday for half the day, <laughs> but my days are mixed up. But I've spent a lot of time since we've been in quarantine and I've been respectful of that since the very beginning. 
Um, but I spent a lot of time just checking on my athletes across the country. How can I meet you where you are? How are you? What's going on? Do you want to talk? Here's my number. You know, you can call me, you can message me anytime because right now anxiety is through the roof. Um, depression is through the roof. Um, uncertainty is through the roof. Fear is through the roof. And a lot of my athletes and including coaches as well, um, they're in situations, you know, um, particularly the athletes are in situations back at home where home life's not good. You mm -hmm. might have abuse, you might have, you know, alcohol abuse, you might have substance abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, it, it, you know, um, they're away from their friends and their family and they're isolated. And so I've spent a lot of my time as well as practicing the pivot, but just meeting them where they are, checking on them and letting, that, letting them know, Jason, they have another outlet, they have another person who loves them, who cares about them. And I think why it works with me is I've thought about this for a really long time. I don't want anything from them. Yeah. And for a lot of these athletes, their whole life, people have wanted things from them. Um, and I don't want anything from them other than for them to live at their highest and best self. I want them to, to be able to look in the mirror and be proud of the person that's staring back at them. And so they know when I reach out to them, I don't want anything from them. I genuinely just want to know that they're okay. Well, to me, that is the example of Christ. Uh, even though we are called to love and put our faith and trust in him, he says he came not to be served, but to serve. And listen, if he wanted to come and say that uh, he wants to be served, then <laughs> we probably would be like, okay. But when you're talking about the Savior coming and saying that he wants to serve, not to be served, man, what an example. It sounds like that is where that comes from, I got to guess. Yeah, absolutely. I, I wrote an ebook a long while back and it was called Live Joy, The Art of Servant Leadership. And, um, and I, I, that's it. I mean, I think for me, um, people want to know genuinely deep down, what's the old saying? It's like, you know, they don't care what you said. They don't care what you did that, you know, it's really, they, they want to know that you care about them. And so I teach my athletes and teach people to check on people, to be a people person, to, to text people for no reason, no, no, um, you know, uh, what, what's in it for me. I mean, recently I just did a, I just did a podcast with, um, uh, with Bill Snyder. And I told this story about how Bill Snyder and I had become friends and we became friends, Jason, because I met him hosting at the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Mm. Um, still do a little bit of hosting, even though I retired from sports casting. And I just said to him, I said, could I call you? I said, I don't want anything from you. I just want to be your friend. And it started this beautiful relationship to where we talk about once or twice a week and he pours into me and he um, lifts me up and I lift him up and ask him questions. And it's just a friendship. And it started because genuinely I wanted nothing from him other than to know him. I love that. Rachel Barbeau is our guest here on Sports Spectrum, changing the narrative. We'll talk a little yeah. bit more about the movement in, in a second, yeah. which is really all of what we're talking about anyways, but specifically the idea of kings and queens. I know we talked about this, I think, the first time you were on the show. I think it was three years ago now, which is crazy. But explain to our audience, we have such a new audience now and way more uh, listeners than we did the first time and viewers share why you specifically call these athletes kings and queens I love it thank you I believe inside every one of us exists greatness I believe inside every one of us exists limitless possibility I believe God placed inside of every single one of us a a purpose and a legacy and and the way I the way I explain it is this is um no one else on the planet could create this movement that I've created, this particular movement. I was put on this earth to do this. And what I learned, um, what I've really learned is that my sports casting career was a runway for this. And, uh, and it took me a while to, to process that in my own head. And so why I call them kings or queens is because I want them to be able to look in the mirror and be proud of the person that's staring back at them. And I'm not talking about Jason, their, their eyebrows, their lipstick or their ear hair, their nose hairs, or, you know, is my hair looking good? My own fleek, you know, like what? I'm not, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your soul. And so many of us, yeah. and it's really why this message is for age six to 96. It, we can't look ourselves in the mirror because of shame, guilt, anger, unforgiveness. And I really 
want these young people and everybody really to be able to to experience this deep kind of I call it good love good love for yourself and when you have good love for yourself yeah you can have good love for others and and um and so for me there's nothing greater than calling somebody a king or queen and and helping them find their purpose and watching their soul rise up to it and mm -hmm. I've voted for the Heisman I've been on the sidelines of the college football playoff I've, you know, I've done a lot of really cool things, but when I see the light bulb go on in somebody's soul and they go, oh, me? Yeah, I am supposed to be great. I am supposed to do these things. I am a king or a queen. You start to walk it, talk it, live it, and you start to, you start to really, all your actions and your reactions, you start to live by that standard, and then it, you can't help but permeate into everybody around you like a rock on a pond, and it's, it's, literally the most gratifying beautiful thing i've ever done in my entire life how hard was that you talked about pivoting earlier how hard was that to pivot from sports broadcasting into into what you're doing now which you could call it speaking you could call yeah. it the professional encourager you yeah. could call it ministry i think it's yeah. all of that how hard was that to pivot to do to do that and kind of step away from something you've been doing for a long time let me just say if we were in biblical times i would be a pile of salt <laughs> <laughs> because yep. I have looked back, uh, God must know me and must know, must obviously does and, and love me and, and, and make room for my faults and concessions for my faults and foibles. But I've looked back more than a couple of times and gone, really, God, are mm -hmm. you sure, God? Like, are you sure? But really, so um, it was about, I would say about a year, I retired this past fall um, after the season and, and it was really about a year that God had been talking to me and he kept saying to me, my girl, my girl, this is what you're meant to do. I want you to pick up your cross and I want you to do it with everything you have. Because what happened to me, and I think this is a great lesson for a lot of people, is um, I woke up with too much to do and I went to sleep with too much to do. I could never catch my breath. And um, towards the end there, I felt like you know, I was, I would be off and speaking and I would get a call sometimes in a moment's notice and get on an airplane to go speak. Or I do a lot of continuing education with these schools as well. And then I would get called to do a serious show. And if I'm being really real here, I don't know at that point in time that I was the best sportscaster. Right. And, yeah. and, and I want, and I always have I've had this honor and, and dignity about working hard and being a hard worker. And, and also, I think God kept saying to me, my girl, that's what he calls me in my spirit. <laughs> and yeah. my girl, he said, um, you know, your whole career, you've been um, analyzing and breaking down players. And now it's time to motivate and lift up. And, and I kept hearing him say it, but I was running from him for about a year. And I kept hanging on. Here's another great nugget. Last August, around SEC Media Days, I was ignoring God. I was still thinking I could do both in my human frailty. Mm -hmm. um, and I sought out a ton of opportunities. And there were opportunities. I'm just going to be really vulnerable here. Because, you know, I don't know any other way to be. Yeah. There were opportunities being a national sportscaster that you would think that I would um, have a really good chance of getting. And um, God kept slamming doors in my face. Mm-hmm. And um, he, uh, he said, if you won't do it my way, I'm going to do it for you. And, um, and it was really around that time where I got really quiet with God and I got really God and I had a lot of like just one-on-one -on -one time and, and talking about this and what would this look like. And I remember I got to host um, the first ever mental health game between two Big Ten teams, Maryland and Minnesota. And it wasn't just a name, Jason. We had, um, we did activations all week. Everybody in that stadium at Minnesota had 40,000 people almost had um, a program with, with, um, with places to go, resources to go if you're feeling suicidal, if you're feeling depressed. Maryland and Minnesota players and coaches, both Coach Locks and Coach Fleck, we all did a PSA together that played during the game. I mean, it was like it, they had helmet stickers, T-shirts. It was crazy. And what they said was, they said, we got to start treating mental health like we do um, if you have a hurt elbow. And and people ask me all week long, and there's, a, there's an answer in here. They asked me, hey, Rachel, 
um, what, you know, what was the purpose here? And I said, if there was one person in the stadium that didn't feel alone, if there was one person in the stadium that said that big, bad football player can talk about his mental health and take off the mask and destroy perfect. You, the, these are things we use in changing the narrative. Yeah. Then, then I can do that. And so after that, Jason, I was on an airplane going down to Mexico for a solo healing trip and it poured out of me. I was bawling. Poor guy next to me. I mean, I'm writing my, I'm writing my, um, my retirement letter. And I had told my business manager, I said, it's coming. I cannot, I, I knew it after August, you know, it was like, it was, it was like this much to keep it in. Right. Mm. And I wrote it. And, and then I went on this solo healing trip after losing my mom. And, and I knew, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know no matter the worldly circumstances, no matter coronavirus, no matter anything, bookings or non-bookings, no matter what happens in the world, I know that this is what God meant for me to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just, there, there's something there for everybody. And that is listening to that, the voice of God. Are you running from, are you running from it? Um, and, and really conquering that fear and saying, you know what? I may feel you. I may dance with you for a little bit, but but then I'm 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 done with you. Yeah. I love that. There's so so much good stuff there, and I think that <laughs> just the idea of of getting that alone time with God is hard for all of us. You know, I, I we hear a lot about the noise, the noise, the noise. The last few weeks has sort of forced us, even if you have family, to to get out of your comfort zone. And sometimes those slam doors that you talked about are the best lessons that we can have to get in a deeper, um, more connected time with the Lord. Can you go a little bit more deeper and what that time was like for you, that experience on, and I know it might even stem back to, um, you know, the loss of your mom, because you were very public about that and posted yeah. a lot about that on social media yeah. and just trying to connect deeper with the Lord. Who, um, so I lost my mom on May 1st. And we had a 10 month battle with her with cancer and, um, and she died in my arms with my, with my dad on May 1st. And just before that, um, I had split up from my partner I was with for my boyfriend for almost two and a half years at that time, two years. So break up, lose my mom. Hmm. Um, I had financially taken care of my mother, Jason, um, in her exploratory treatment and her juicing and those things. So so fast forward after May 1st, we get to about July. And this is where I talk about using your pain for purpose and, and how the Lord um, will, he's with you. Lo, I'm with you at the bottom, right? Yeah. He's not a God of the mountaintops. He is with you all the time. Absolutely. And so fast forward to July, um, early July, probably the second week in July, I was getting up early for serious shows. And um, I'm not an early riser. I'm more of a night owl. And these were like 5 a.m. shows. So I was getting up, you know, 6 a.m. shows. So I was getting up very early. It was the second day. There were a couple of things that happened that the devil thought that he was going to use to harm me. But actually, in the long run, God used for good. But I was sleep deprived. I was um, dealing with a breakup. Lost my best friend and my mother. Um, I was financially, uh, you know, on the edge. And so all of these things hit me at one time. And um, I was trying to sleep, getting up for the show, and it was about three o'clock in the morning, and I started to hear whispers in my ear, and these, these voices, it was a voice of the devil telling me, you're an effing loser. Hmm. You can't keep anything. You should just kill yourself. You should just end it all. Hmm. And, um, and Jason, when, when the voices were not, were, when the voices, it, after that, came ideations of putting the gun that I had downstairs in my mouth and blowing my brains out. And I know that there was spiritual, a spiritual battle that was going on in my house that night. And somehow I survived it. And um, I woke up the next day and I did serious show. And I remember I was sniffling the whole time. And my, my producer was like, are you okay? And I was like, Oh, I'm good. I'm good. I, um, I said, I've just got allergies. And it took me about a week. I was so tender, right? I'm like, I just survived, you know, a suicidal episode, right? Like this, oh my gosh. And it took me about a week to think about whether I wanted to talk about it or not. And, um, and this leads into the quiet time you asked about with God. And, and I, I, I wrestled with it. And one voice said, 
you can't talk about it. No one will book you. You're a loser. You're defective. You're, you're no, I mean, you're, you are the worst of the worst. You're all, you know, every bad thing you could think about yourself, it was yeah. here. And then the voice on the other shoulder said, you tell them, my girl, you tell them, you're a warrior. I saved you. And what the devil meant to kill you, I gave you a blueprint to be able to save other people's lives. That's it. And, um, and so I talked about it and, it, and it went viral. And then a number of my athletes then started making videos where they talked about things. A gymnast, an LSU gymnast, talked about uh, her struggles with eating disorders, and it went viral. And people started to take off the mask. And then this movement blew up even bigger because I went on the road that August and started saying, I've been there. I've heard the voices. I, I literally like saw me putting the gun in my mouth. And I said, and I am here to tell you, you're not defective. You're not broken. And you've never been as strong as when you ask for help. And it changed everything. And so that, that time, in addition with the time where things were getting, you know, slammed in my face where I thought I was going to do with my career, God yeah. was saying, don't you see, Rachel? Don't you see? You know, this is, this is something that you went through, Romans 8, 28, and I've used it for my good that you can help other people. And so I, I really, to answer your question, it was the longest, longest answer. No, it's I, fine. <laughs> I really feel like people have to, one, you have to spend time with them. And I love what you said about this past couple of weeks, it's slowing down and making us focus on what we have to focus on. But understanding that he's in everything. He was in that not, that, he was in that dark night of the soul. He was there. Yeah. And um, that's how I've gotten even closer to him, is knowing that he's in everything, Jason. He's in the good, the bad, the happy, the sad. And that led me to say, okay, God, what do you want from me? Where do you want me to go? I'm, I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it your way. I want to pick up my cross and I want to follow you. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And thank you for sharing that. I know how, how hard that still is. I can tell by you sharing it. Let me ask you this. When, yeah. when you started sharing this yeah. to your Kings and Queens, as I like to say, and it makes me <laughs> smile when I say that this, you realize that you're not the only one going through this and that you talk about how our pain can become our purpose. Yeah. Uh, and God can use like Romans eight twenty eight says somehow use this for good. But I'm guessing when you started sharing this, that some of your kings and queens, coaches, players, whoever it is, yes. they're going through a lot of the same things that you went through, aren't they? Oh, absolutely. Oh, Jason, yeah. what happened on the road that August after July, this past August, was nothing short of miraculous. I held players in my arms, coaches in my arms, kings and queens in my arms that said, I was literally going to drive off the road today. Mm. I was so depressed. Another young man told me I had a noose around my neck and I was going to step off the chair and I got bit in the head by a mosquito and I took it as a sign to take the, take the noose off wow. or I've taken the pills or I've cut myself or you made me feel less crazy. You made me feel like I'm not alone. And it was like, it was like, this movement has been like growing, 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 growing. And then, you know, this horrific thing happened to me, but God, again, like, here's what I say is I say, I, I, I've got buckets of water for people that are still burning and I'm going back in the house. <laughs> I've got that. the blueprint. God has given me the blueprint. And it's sometimes yeah. it's just as simple as saying, I'm here with you. You're not alone. And, you know, people often ask me, they say, but, you know, you talk about mental health, but you're not a mental health professional. I'm not. I'm the person that normalizes you going to get help. I'm the person that tells you you're not defective. You're not broken. You're not alone. So let's get you to mental health, right? Like if, if we need to focus on that, you're over here training, you're training this, you're training that, you're training your body. You got to train your mind. You got to make sure the mentals are okay. Yeah. And um, it, it, it's been insanely beautiful and life-saving. Um, Jason, I've had three middle of the night suicide phone calls and none of them, thank God, went to fruition. We 
I have a psychotherapist that works with the movement. We called their schools. We got them into the therapy. We followed up with them. They're all doing well now. And I'm in touch with all of them. And so, yeah, it's, um, we say this in the movement. We say, take off the mask. Mm -hmm. My own dark night of the soul has allowed other people to feel comfortable taking off the mask. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, because I, I, for time purposes, I want to give you a chance to tell people a little bit more about the movement, as you call it, changing the narrative, because yeah. this isn't just for your kings and queens athletes that you work with. I'm guessing if somebody's listening right now and they want to just talk to Rachel Joy, I mean, yeah. you're on your social media pages, you're pretty open about that. And obviously, if there's a deeper level here, please seek professional help, of yes. course, um, and reach out to me, reach out to Rachel, and we'll point you to the right yeah. people. But this isn't just, this changing the narrative isn't just for an athlete, correct? Absolutely not. And that's where it, it's my life. You know, a lot of coaches tell me, they're like, Rachel, I think why it works is you don't come in there and yeah, 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 yeah. You lift up, you motivate, you tell them you're born for greatness, you tell them you can do better, you teach them how to do better and how to have those self check-ins, right? Like with yourself in the mirror, how to get mental help. You teach men, I don't care what your granddaddy's, 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 granddaddy's taught you, but you know, this idea of masculinity to, you know, shut up, man up, put some dirt on it, stuff it up and keep moving and don't cry. It's killing us, it's killing yeah. men across the country. Yeah. True masculinity is saying, I don't have the tools in my toolbox to be able to deal with this. I need some help. I need some help being vulnerable, being real. And so, yeah, I learned along the way, this movement that started as purpose, passion platform, my own life, my own um, uh, affinity for fame. I wanted fame. I wanted to work at ESPN where you worked for so many years and went sure. up there a couple of times, interviewed and was like, you know, second and third and a lot of things. And, and um, my, you know, my affinity for fame. And then, and we, we, so it started as purpose, passion platform. And then we talked a little bit about, about what they could do in their life besides football. Who are you away from the field besides sport? What makes your heart beat faster than my own experience with domestic violence? And then along the way, it became also um, being a king or queen, right? And then it also started to encompass interpersonal relationships, how to date well, how to treat people well, how to love yourself, self-care, mental health. So yeah, I say this all the time to people. It's for ages, and I mentioned this earlier, six to 96. All of us can be a king or queen. I don't care what you've done, and this is the message of Christ. I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you've been. You are not too dirty. You're not too far gone. You're not too broken. You haven't done anything that is too far gone for God, and you yeah. can come back. And, you know, oftentimes in a, in a school setting, I can't obviously mention, you know, God, um, but it's like my friend Bobby Bowden says, he says that you, that's the foundation of everything you're doing, Rachel. You're teaching the Bible without ever teaching the Bible. That's what you're doing. <laughs> that's it. And listen, <laughs> it's, it's, it's you exude joy. And yeah. where does our joy come from? Our joy comes from the Lord. So it's really, it makes a lot of sense, Rachel, what you're yeah. doing. Let everybody know the website. It's changingthenarrative.com, right? Yeah, it's I'm, the letter I am, changingthenarrative.org. Okay. Um, and we actually added That'll an I to, I'm to it recently to make it more declarative, like I'm changing the narrative. Okay. And um, there's a program there, an online program for high school students, for high school boys, um, any athlete or non-athlete. And then I'm working on right now, um, I've been wanting to do it for the longest time, but now I have time. I'm working on an online program for everybody, not just athletes, because people ask me all the time, hey, I would love to see one of your talks. I would love to do these things. So love they it. can um, definitely keep up with me at imchangingthenarrative.org for updates on that online program as well. I'm changing the narrative.org. Okay, yeah. last question. And we asked yeah. this three years ago. We're going to ask it again. What's Jesus teaching you right now? What are you learning from the Lord today that he's taught you a lot? You've shared over the last year what he's shown you and taught you, but we, we, I feel like we learn something new every day. What's he teaching you right now? Trust me. Mm. Trust me. Get up underneath my wing in this storm. I love it. I don't even need to say go on with that. That's it. So simple. So beautifully so said. Yeah. We can me. have the peace of Jesus Christ. We can have the peace of God during COVID. We can have the peace of Jesus when, when our world's falling apart. Because we know his promises, 
We know it's yes and amen. We know the word is infallible and we know where we're going and we know who we live for. And we can have that peace at any time, my friend. Mm. Rachel Barbeau, thank you. You're awesome. Thank I you. appreciate you coming on. You're the best. <laughs> and let's, uh, let's, let's connect very, very soon. Thanks so much. Thank you.